Hi everybody, I'm Sean Dahlquist and I'm here at Waters West and today I'll be tying a Ackroyd. So this pattern is an old uh, classic salmon, Atlantic salmon uh, D fly, um, but it's also a great steelhead fly for the winter and springtime. Um, I'm tying it on a pretty big hook. This is a blue heron size one. Um, yeah, it's a fun pattern. A lot going on here. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so for this pattern, we're going to use this big size one blue heron hook. I really like these hooks for tying D style flies on. Um, we're starting out with white thread here because the rear half that we're going to be working on is going to be bright and we want to be able to keep it that way so I'm using white thread and I'm also going to tie in some flat silver tinsel and wrap an underbody so that when this fly is wet the silver tinsel shines up through the dubbed body and keeps it bright and this also will create a tag so for the tag I like to go maybe just a turn past the hook point start coming back up all right about maybe four turns of that and this is fishing fly so I'm not going to be too fussy about everything so catch it there trim it off and save this piece because we'll use this exact diameter for the rib on the remaining half of the fly a little bit later okay so for the tail it calls for golden pheasant crest I'm going to use two and I'm going to wet my fingers and just kind of marry them together like that. Tail length is up to you. I like to do it maybe at or just maybe slightly past the hook bend and I leave the fibers long catch them in there and that just helps to stabilize the tail keep it flat over the hook okay so secure that in and this pattern like just kind of typical of D flies has a or some D patterns has a tail veiling of golden pheasant tip it. I like to use a over dyed golden pheasant tippet so that even the underside it stays bright. Just tie this in right on top. go that looks good and at this point we can also tie in our silver oval rib and now just take a few loose turns up just kind of tidy everything down 
I like to try to keep the materials that I tied on top on the top part and keep the rib on the underside. Trim all the waste out of there. Okay. And now Time for the create the body of the back half. So at this point, you can it calls for a yellow saddle or neck hackle. You can tie this in, tie that in now by the tip and run it forward. But I'm going to tie this more like a woolly bugger and uh, dub my body and then tie it in at the end of the rear half section and spiral it back and lock it in with my oval tinsel just so that it's a little bit more durable. This is a fishing fly, so. So for the back half here, you can tie a straight yellow. I like this sort of golden yellow, orange yellow, marigold, whatever you want to call it. It's just got a little bit more orange to it. I think that looks really nice. I like to dub it on pretty tight. You can also use wool yarns or um, mohair or anything like that. I like to use just a natural dubbing. And I like to keep it pretty sparse. here all right so at this point I'm going to tie in my hackle and you can decide to leave this full I decided to strip one side just so it's a little a little more sparse and tie that in by the butt end there and then just start wrapping it around I might have to throw my hackle pliers on here so yeah this is like the same technique that I would use when I'm tying like a woolly bugger You don't really you don't need to to fight it. These the fibers will will get out of the way. I like to try to hit four wraps of this tinsel on the back section and three on the front. So there's our fourth right there. Pull that out of the way. So now that hackle's really in there. Trim that to length. Trim this back piece out. Tidy that up. Then you can you can go back in with a bodkin if you need to, or a needle, and free up some of those fibers. 
if you want. I'm just going to pinch those down. And at this point, I am going to change my thread color to black. Okay. So we've got our thread attached. We take our piece of length of flat tinsel from before. And we'll need an oval rib here. Alright, we'll tie them in together. The oval near me and the flat silver uh, on the far side. So at this point you can you can opt to tie your spay hackle the same way as we did this saddle hackle and counter rib and lock it down. I'm just going to tie it in uh, right now. <clears throat> and so for this pattern uh, there's all kinds of hackles you can use for your, for your long uh, spay style hackle. Um, you can use dyed black ring neck pheasant rump which works really good if you have uh, long enough fibers on it. Um, you can use blue eared pheasant dyed black if you can get it. Um, I'm just going to use this piece of marabou because it's cheap and it's easy to get. Everybody can get it and it actually looks pretty good on this fly. And marabou has excellent action in the water as everybody knows. So I'm just going to tie this in by the tip right on top here tie this down real quick come back And a lot of vintage examples of this fly have a floss, black floss body, but I've seen plenty that are actually dubbed just like the rear half, so that's what I'm going to do here. Again, just kind of trying to keep it sparse. Just a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. And now we start bringing everything up. I'm going to try to hit three, three ribs here. Catch it. So there's the flat. And then the oval following right behind. Catch it on the side. All right. 
And now for the tackle, take one wrap over top and then follow right in behind the oval. And I'm just going to keep wrapping until I finish this plume out. Catch it on the side. For the collar on this one, trapped fiber there. There we go. You can use teal or gadwall, um, any sort of barred feather. I, I like the way the guinea looks on this with the marabou. So I'm just going to use a nice big guinea feather. Tie it in on the side here. And you can fold this beforehand. I'm just going to fold it up. Just give it a pull before you start wrapping it. Make sure it's in there good. Tie that in and I'll just fold that back. Okay, that's not going to go anywhere. Just fold all the fibers back as you go. Preen it up a little bit. Now for the wing, uh, you can use natural turkey, um, cinnamon turkey, if you have anything like that. Um, this is a white wing, so I'm going to use white goose shoulder. And you can wing this any, any different way. So I'm going to use this, the left side for the slips for my side and the right side slips for your side. But you can reverse that, make the, uh, the uh, right slips the near side and the left one's the far side. You can tie them in flat and have it V over the back. There's all kinds of ways to do this. I like, I just have always done it this way. So I'm going to tie my side first. I'm just going to do a soft loop. I 
looks all right. Same length right here again, soft loop. with my fiber length, but I think that's just long enough. Okay. And now, the last thing to do, get your jungle cock in there. with these for a minute. So try to get some of the fibers, the base fibers, tied down with it. There we go. Help lock it in place. All right, so secure everything. butt ends. Flatten out my thread. go and using uh, the everything that I just showed you there you can tie this pattern which everybody loves it's a deck Hogan Skagit mist which is basically the same pattern a little bit different color scheme it's basically just the steelhead Ackroyd There you go.